Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Hey, we are back with the awesome Zach Callison. Did you watch part one? Here's part two. <laughs> Let's get buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. So you started doing conventions. Mm-hmm. Um which is so exciting. Um, and how many times do you think you've had to sing Cookie Cat? It comes up. There have been like two or three conventions that it hasn't happened at. Mm. And I've probably done like 30-something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a lot. At some conventions, it's multiple times. But it's yeah. always fun because, you know, yeah. the crowd gets into it and I have them clapping and doing yes. the, the Cookie Cat chant. And yeah. It's, it doesn't get boring. So what is it like for you to be at these conventions and you meet the fans and you see what your work has done for them or how it's affected them. Is there any kind of highlights for you from it? Absolutely. I mean, the just seeing everybody gathered in one place and watching the panel and cheering at all our little jokes and references is fun. But there was one in particular uh, that speaks for a lot of them, but this one stuck with me. There was a, a father and a son that came up to the booth, and first I talked to the son, and he was super jazzed, and I did the voice for him, and then he, he went down the row because some of the other cast members were there. And he, um, the father stayed behind, and he said, hey, I just want to thank you for the show, um, which I, I can't ever take credit for that because it's, it's Rebecca Sugar's brainchild, and I'm yeah. a minuscule part of that. But he said, um, I went to Afghanistan. I had two tours there, and I came back. I had PTSD, and it was, it was awful. I, I felt dead inside. I didn't have any, any feelings left. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started you know, trying to spend more time with my son, when I got back and I started watching his cartoons with him and we watched Steven Universe together and it, he said it brought the color back. Mm. And I, ah. wow. I didn't know how to respond. It, you can't. Yeah, I, I thanked him a million times yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. How cool, man. Because the, the show, you know, it, it has a positive message. It mm-hmm. has a message of you are not alone. Yeah. You, um, it, it really speaks to a lot of, a lot of people who are, are feeling that way, um, yeah. and I, I'm and glad for it. there's lots of them, them too. Oh, yeah. such a privilege. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And That's again, so I, I cool. cannot wow. take credit for any of that. Just yeah. well, you are part too. of the process and the collaboration, and so you, you know, you are, you absolutely can take ownership of what part you played. Well, thank you. you know, because yeah, that's it's an important role. That's important for, sure. for you. Yeah. And yeah. since I mentioned her, just Rebecca Sugar in general, I mean, she's one of the most brilliant people I've ever mm-hmm. worked with, and I say it every time I get a chance. Um, I was just talking to her this morning about, you know, just in-depth stuff about the plots and the story, stuff yeah. that might not ever, you know, see the light of day, just little details. Yeah. And right. it's it's all been planned out and accounted for, and it's it's her brainchild, and she... With all the books and the games, she she makes sure she has a hand in all of it and has meetings for all of it because mm-hmm. she wants it to all be on the same page and be a consistent, living, breathing universe. Yeah. And yeah, her yeah. her commitment is just inspiring. That's so great, man. Mm. Love it. You're a good boy, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sweet kid. <laughs> sweet um, kid. Haven't heard that one in a while. <laughs> right? Um, so he's um, called seventy-year-old sweet kids. Just so you know, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of his thing. So. Uh, Stacy was telling me that on your resume, <laughs> under special skills, oh, Jesus. you know where we're going with this? <laughs> under special skills, it says, like, cry on cue or something like that. Yeah. Do you really actually do that? Like, you could just bam, cry? It is harder for me than it we're used to be. We're not going to make you, don't worry. We're, we're not going to make you cry. I mean, you <laughs> might at the end, Listen, but not right the now. the story you just told me got me, I was a little know, teary, That actually. was like a good segue, but... Um, you know, there are certain actor cheats that, right. that we take advantage of, and magicians never tell their secrets, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, and like a, an on-set situation, yeah, if, if it's called for in the scene. Yeah. Um, Did you ever have... do the cut a hole in your pants and pinch your thigh really hard? Um, no, <laughs> I have, I don't <laughs> have a great, a trick I don't have a great crying? pain tolerance, but it's not that bad. <laughs> no, I, I worked with someone who he, we were doing some scenes and he really had to go there and he just couldn't. And so he, he thought if I cut a hole in my pants and, and then, you know, had his hand in his pocket and just pinched his thigh really hard and it got him to cry, but. Hey, yeah. whatever works for you. It's I'm never gonna do people that. People do, yeah. I, I don't think it would help me. <laughs> <laughs> Just personal <laughs> opinion. Because there's so much going on, it's fabulous. He can't Funny story oh my about gosh, that man. specific cry on cue special skill. I was in an audition for like a Disney sitcom yeah. when I was like 14 or 15, and the casting people saw that, and they're like, "Oh, can you actually do that? Can you do it right now?" I was mm-hmm. like, 
oh, all right, let's shift gears from this cheery sitcom script. Yeah. And they only gave me about 30 seconds. And it usually, like, from going from, like, zero to 60, usually I have, like, an hour before to, like, get into it and, right. and keep it on right. simmer. But I was almost there, and they're like, okay, all right. I was like, <laughs> and I've never forgiven them since. See, maybe the pinch on the thigh would have worked in 30 seconds. Well, but speaking of that, yeah. you and Chuck have a little Disney connection. Um, you were on the show I'm in the Band. Yes. We, you... And Chuck... Don't you remember me on a show, man? We I'm had kidding. Steve Valentine like, uh, on the show a few months ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a riot. I haven't seen him in a long yeah. time. Amazing. So incredible. But he was Chuck was the singing voice of Derek Jupiter. Yeah, and, no way. Yeah. And the, so in, and the he told me he had a different singing voice. That's yeah. crazy. And the show opening, that's Chuck. Yeah, yeah. So, it, which is funny because when I saw him, we just saw his magic show, Steve Valentine. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I thought there's no way he'd recognize me because I haven't seen him in like forever. And he goes. You're the guy. <laughs> you were my singing voice. I'm like, you remember that? He goes, of course. How can I forget? Yeah. Uh, it was so neat. That was such a fun show. Oh, it, the set was awesome. They yeah. Were just a blast. Just goofing off the entire time, having a great time. And my episode was chaos. It was a LARPing episode. Yeah. So mm. they had just legions of people with foam swords, and I was the king, and like a like a little ten year old tyrant. And oh my gosh. It was it was awesome. That was oh my, my first guest star experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was. And you really got cool. great recognition for that. Um, so how, you mentioned kind of earlier, but how did you balance um, getting an education and working as you were growing up? I was homeschooled through um, some computer-based programs until uh, high school started. I, I skipped eighth grade because of uh, the program I was going to for high school. Um, I tested out of it. And I honestly think that was a mistake because mm. I was fine in English math. I I was always lagging behind, and that right, right. really came back to haunt me later on. Uh, but I went to a few different. I went to that school for a year. I did an online school for a semester, and then I f finished my last two and a half years at an independent study program called Opus with a lot of other performers, a lot of kids from Disney, um, a couple of the girls from the uh, U.S. women's uh, gymnast team, mm -hmm. just people who needed flexibility in their right, education. Right. And it was that great. That was a pun. People who... Uh, <laughs> totally yeah, intended. Well yes. <clears throat> yeah, totally brilliant. intended. His chops are sharp. <sighs> yeah, I've been training for this day. Very witty. <laughs> witty Zach here. Say something witty. Now. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, um, I didn't mean to interrupt, but... It's a real roller coaster. Yeah. Obviously, sometimes you're working on set and you have to do the tutors and all of that. So, um, do you feel like you ever want to go and do some more traditional education you know a lot of my best friends are doing the college thing right now mm -hmm. and i like i have a buddy who wants to be a historian he's major history buff and that's my not as much as him but that's my my forte in school and i when he talks about the discussions they have and the papers he writes it's like oh, I, I really wish i could you know invest in that a little more because uh, mm -hmm. i'm not doing school but it i think overall i'm on the right path like i'd, I'd rather be doing this than that full time yeah um yeah. And I, I was just burnt out after high school, just between everything. My Were high school you a experience. A student or a straight B student? I was a straight A student, but I was very lazy, to be honest. I yeah. I didn't. I sort of phoned it in because I knew I could. A lot of times, I, yeah. I took advantage of the fact that I only had to go to school like once a week or once every other week to turn in my work. And there was, you know, I I, I studied and I learned the information, but I certainly didn't retain a lot of it. The only sub only the subjects I cared about, mm -hmm. um, English history, um, and I struggled with math all through high school. So and I had gymnastics. tutors. Gymnastics. Yeah. What's right. that? You, in and gymnastics. Oh, I was <laughs> great at that. <laughs> he was great. At that. Look yeah. for him in the then next. Then I had my back injury, and nothing was. <laughs> oh nothing no, was the same. Zach. Zach is gonna be. Oh, look for him in the God. next Olympics. This could be cool. <laughs> yeah, math, history, and <laughs> gymnastics. Um, and the rings. Crazy. <laughs> And I, the rings. I do those, uh, you know, like the aerial with like the, um, <laughs> the claw. What, what do they call that? Oh, like the ribbons. The ribbons, yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Can you can you do something for us? <laughs> I actually, I, I injured myself again. But you, you oh. come to my. He's injured today, so he's he won't in be able to do therapy. that. It definitely doesn't have anything to do with but the mic attached to me that will break if late. I stand up. Oh, that's but, crazy, man. You can um, you can get you can always you know, people are going yes. to get their degrees when they're in their sixties. You know, there's never. Yeah. There's something to be said for life experience, too, I think. If I find it necessary at some point, I could see myself going back for business, mm -hmm. just because that's something I can't pick up as much. I, I certainly can and have over the past couple yeah. of years, but you know, film, I, I feel like I have the people around me that I can learn that from and the experience mm -hmm. I can learn that from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
that's something a little more outside of it that will still serve my career. Of course. I think would yeah. be yeah. the only thing. And I would probably just do, not even finish. I would just take some classes. Yeah. yeah. Um, only the things that I... I felt were exactly yeah, the necessary. things. Yeah. What advice could you give other young actors and singers um, about pursuing their performing dreams? I mean, make art and don't stop. It's it's persistence. I've been going on thirteen years in the industry, and only recently has it like really, really become, you know, anywhere close to what what I was striving for all this yeah. time. Mm -hmm. It's really a time and numbers game, and. You know, you have to be cut out for that. You have to expect that going in um, and understand that you have to love your art enough to put up with that Yeah. Um, and, and enjoy that experience. But at the core of it, it is about making art. So make art in whatever way possible, in whatever small way possible. Um, just always be creating and honing your skill, whatever that is, or multiple skills. And mm -hmm. that will that will help you see the light of day even when it's... Career-wise, business-wise, professionally, it's not moving yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. How important is uh, really studying the craft and becoming like just really great? It, I mean, it's it's everything. Um, I mean, it's business sense certainly plays yeah. a, a part in in right. you know that side of things. But the talent has to be there. And even if you you get a break and you end up somewhere, um, if you're not practiced and you're not up on the things you need to be up on, um, it's going to be a flash in the pan, and you're right. not going to be able to follow it up and, you know, continue to do things at that level because you might not have actually been at that level to begin with if you weren't practicing and keeping up with with your skills and the things you love. Yeah. So yeah. it's very important. Yeah. Do you still study, uh, you know, acting and and? Yeah. I, I, have you guys ever had Charlie Adler on the show? Yes. Yeah. I take his class. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, he Genius. is. He is. Fantastic. One of the best teachers I've ever had. He's great. Um, and I only started taking from him uh, towards the end of last year. And I've done a few of his workshops, and he's just brilliant. Yeah. And in a short amount of time, I've learned so, so much. And I I go back, I coach on a lot of auditions still. Um, I'm in between scene study classes right now just because it's so busy, but I fully yeah. intend in the next few months mm -hmm. to go back and just do the weekly scene study thing. Um, just because it's, you can, you can never stop training. Even the Absolutely. best actors, they don't. Yeah. True. Don't quit yeah. class. Yeah. yeah. And you always learn something too. Even oh, yeah. when you think, you know, gosh, I know so much already. There's so much to learn, right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. and especially if you're in a uh, uh, scene study or a group, you know, watching other people and how they solve oh, a yeah. problem. It's collaborative. It's so yeah. interesting and, it, you know, it's such a great tool. Absolutely. To, to yeah. Put in your box. Hey, let's talk about music. Yeah. All right. EP, a you got bit. something coming out. We want to know about it. I do. I've been very quiet about it lately. I haven't given a lot of details. My my fans know that it's coming. Is this like a Bo Bo's Weekly exclusive? Dun dun. Dun dun. I can I can talk a few details. Yeah. Um, yeah. The we're getting a nibble. The EP. It's it's been a long time coming. It started as um, a revenge fantasy. We'll call it. Okay. Um, and then it became a pet project, and now it's becoming my like like creative magnum opus to this point so yeah. far it's 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 just me and my producer really um that i found to produce it just working in a room over the past year and a half on these songs and you yeah. know a couple haven't made the cut um and that's that's why it's i'm really trying to make something that will leave a lasting impression that's not cookie cutter that's that takes from my inspirations i i come from like a rock and roll background from my dad yeah. and then you know more recently, electronic and hip hop, and finding a middle ground between those things. I, I live in a, an alternative area. Um, so this is going to be like what an alternative rock hip hop project? Y yes. Um, nice. Think you know. You weren't going to say that, but I'm taking it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rap and I sing on the project. That's um, great. I don't, you know, pretend to call myself a rapper. That's that is something I do yeah. for the finished product. Yeah. But it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think Twenty One Pilots. Uh, as far they have their pop, but they have in, yep. hip hop influence. Yep. Panic at the Disco with their, yep. you know, Brandon Yuri showmanship mm -hmm. and, um, very, you know, s constantly changing songwriting. Um, his songs go from point A to point B and back, and then yeah. they go crazy very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Muse for the, 
the theatrics. Nice. Oh, you love Muse. Yeah. My, the biggest thing about my sound is it's very theatrical. It yeah. takes a little bit from my musical theater background and mm -hmm. then that sort of like space rock, rock opera yeah. type thing in, in an alternative form. But Ooh, all my songs have this. a very you know, totally, dramatic man. flair What's to them. What's the instrumentation on the, on the song? Is it... Uh, like every, full on, you know, strings and drums and everything, or yeah. Uh, the latest song that we that we finished, it's uh, it's got a brass section on it. Um, cool. And I play piano on it. We have a session bassist and session drummer. All the songs to this point have had real drums with a mixture of some um, prog drums as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm planning on on possibly doing one song with prog drums, just because I I love so much music with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the instrumentation I, I never like to limit myself to one set of things. It's yeah. changing. We have or like a ton of organs and synth bass on the new one. No guitar. Um, really jumping around a lot because I on all my favorite records the genre switch yep. at the drop of a hat. Yep. I love it. Thank you. This sounds so cool, very man. very unique. We, where can we get it? Yeah. It's gonna be online. It's uh, it's gonna be on iTunes as soon as I release it, which I haven't given a date yet because okay. I, I'm really trying to perfect it. But so, that will yes. be everywhere. When Zach's EP comes mm -hmm. out, get it. He's gonna let us know. Yes. He's gonna give us a heads up. Yes. And we're gonna let everybody know the day it happens, so you can get out there and download it. Congratulations. Thank that, you. Yeah. So you wrote all the songs. Yeah, solo. Yeah. So what was that like for you? Is that are you the the guy who has a notebook and has ideas and wakes up in the middle of the night and yeah, yeah, and I record them. I'm, I have a computer by my bed with a piano. Yeah. Um, but as far as an experience, it's been the biggest pain in the ass I've ever endured. <laughs> um, <laughs> for my future records, I'm going to make them more of a production. I'm going to have a, a team of producers, a team of writers. But mm -hmm. for this specific record, it's such a specific vision um, about a, a time in my life where it's. At the beginning of the album, I am I am a child, and at the end, I am an adult. Mm. Um, and that has wow. been the process. It's it, it started. No one knows that better than you, honey. Exactly. Um, and I wanted I wanted an album that I wrote um, by myself, just just so I could I could do that once yeah, and and yeah. not feel bad about bringing in a team. Yeah. And, and and some Especially people consider a it cheating. I don't. Album like but, that. You yeah. Know? Exactly. Yeah. It is yeah. it is a bit of a concept album, and and there are uniting factors between the songs, and they they reference each other a little bit. That's and cool. It's, it's all about a heartbreak, uh, and that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. It's the heartbreak and the aftermath and how how I deal with it. And it, it also in, involves the elements of Hollywood because me and the other person were involved in the industry, and, and mm -hmm. it puts a, a filter on yeah. a normal relationship and a normal breakup and the way it plays out. Whoever dared to break your heart, we want names. Yeah. Hey, we're can gonna you give take any care advice of that for you. to our young viewers on how to deal with a heartbreak? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Her name is Juanita. Oh, that's what I'm calling her on the album. That's what <laughs> Juanita! I yeah. Juanita. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Juanita, how dare you? How dare you, Juanita? It's an actual nickname we used. Me and my friends used to call her. It's yeah. It's sort of a joking thing, um, and it sort of evolved. And now there's a song where I'm like screaming it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that yeah. is so great. You I know, love it. there's there's all kinds of therapy, and this is your you. The the important thing is that you have worked through it. Yeah, and you're not a time absolutely. bomb, and that's the important thing. You know, you got to work through your stuff. Yep. It isn't always pretty, but the fact you've done it in such a productive yep. way that honored who you are is huge. Yeah, I, you know, that's been the. It started as a coping mechanism at mm -hmm. first, and then it it evolved into, you know, this super important project that's very personal to me. Yeah. Um, and she she's also a musician, and I knew that she was going to be writing songs about me. I was like, I was no. gonna say I'm, is hers dropping? <laughs> I'm, yeah. Oh my gosh. I wonder what your name is. How amazing would that be? Hers. She's been working on it for like five years, and it hasn't come out. Oh. So, um, so I might mention that on a couple of the tracks. And, uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this it is gets it gets personal and real. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Which I'm. That's gonna be. By the way, that's the new thing. The new thing is that you know you write records about. Hey, <laughs> Taylor Swift you get has specific. Taylor very, Swift very just specific. pulled a few albums uh, totally. based on her heartbreak. Um, so that's a hip hop trend. I mean, yeah. hip hop has never been afraid to specifically call out people yeah. in Ooh. verses. Yeah, totally. And it's it's I see no reason why that can't bleed into other genres, especially yeah. when it's you know in rap form and there's there's yeah. so much 
more room to say things because Absolutely. you have more syllables. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Zach, when you do these cons, I want to make sure that we mention mm -hmm. Jeff yes. Zanini because mm -hmm. he's, Celebrity he's your talent agent booking. for that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he gets me Hi, those. Jeff. Hi, Jeff. How do you do? Jeff, we love your pants, we love dude. Jeff. So Zach's been talking about your pants. So They're awesome. Fancy. His pants are great and his shoes are great, but like Jeff but the shirts. shirts. The shirts. We <laughs> talked about his shirts, and he's got the most rock and roll shirts that he I, does, I want. He does, man. And uh, we need to go to that we're store where you're talking about that he gets them at. We're going to take Zach shopping. We're and taking gonna, him to the place. He's going to buy all your shirts. Just yeah. don't don't tell everybody else. We're not. <laughs> I got to get to him first. Yeah. We're going to take you to the place. We're going to get you the, all, the spot. Oh, all so snazzy. Great. What do you still want to accomplish when you look ahead as an actor, as a musician? What do you still want to realize? Feature film was the first goal when I came out here. Mm -hmm. um, and that is where I see myself ending up. I want to do films. I want to... I'd love to write and direct to an extent, but I also I, I want to continue acting and stay yeah. in front of the camera because um, that's that's home base for me. Yep. Um, I, I really I look to people like Donald Glover, for example, um, or Joseph Gordon-Levitt. You see mm -hmm. their their careers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they they do everything, and they have a team that is cohesive to doing everything. Childish Gambino just put out a killer record that. It, nobody else is doing anything like it. He's in Lion King, Spider-Man, and the new Star Wars movie. He's got Atlanta, one of the best shows on television. Right. Um, he's involved with some new like Deadpool animated series I just yep. saw a uh, headline the other day. Like he's doing everything, and it's I I I see a career like that. And it's like I I love doing all these things, and I don't yeah. intend to pigeonhole myself into one of them. And that's why I've I've started a business and yeah. and want to you know build a team yeah. and yeah. and a a unit that is cohesive to that. That's so cool, man. It. You know what's beautiful, man, mm -hmm. is that you, you, you see other people that you want to have. So you I emulate. mean, not mm -hmm. to emulate, to have you know that that big and rich of a career, right? And and you know what they do, everything that they do, and you follow them. And I always tell people because there's so many people in voiceover specifically, like even in music, right? When when I was growing up. I was learning gu the guitar riffs of all these amazing guitar players, mm -hmm. which later on, in, you know, d helped me develop my own little thing. And now, voiceover actors don't do that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you ask a voiceover actor, so like earlier when you were telling me about your music and you're talking, you're talking about this band and blah blah and Muse and da 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 and a little bit of, this, and I was like, that's so cool that you're taking these little things mm -hmm. from all these little places that you love and yeah. creating the, your the, this that's, unity of yourself. But through your nobody own, does that in voiceover. Own, yeah. They're just like, oh yeah, so I was just doing an audition <laughs> and acting mm -hmm. by myself, no, I, isolated yeah. in a booth. I, I listen every time I, I have the opportunity to be in the booth with a Jess or with a Kevin yeah. Michael Richardson or. Frank Welker once, thank mm. God, man's, yeah. thank man's God, incredible. Right? Yeah. Um, I just, I just watch, I observe, uh, and Charlie in the class, like he, yeah. he goes crazy, like even yeah. when he's not on the mic, just doing voices and going off and just, just witnessing that and, and soaking that in. I feel like there's a lot to be learned from that. It, it's art is, it's morally okay stealing. Like you, you steal little bits of things to yeah. the point right. where it's not plagiarism, right. but you, you steal a bunch of little bits to make your own thing. Yeah. You well, can't. yeah, because you run it through your own filter, and so exactly. it's not gonna be an absolute imprint. And yeah. as far as you know, film and music go, especially music, I listen to everything. Um, mm -hmm. On the way here, I had a Kendrick Lamar song, a Chris Stapleton song, uh, an Avicii song on my playlist. Like I, I just, I, I love every single sound, and I wanna do songs inspired by all those different genres yeah. at some right. point in my career right. um, because they all they all speak to me. That's well, cool. I love how open you are to your own creativity and to what's around you and I and I am so excited to see what what happens as you move forward. Thank it's you. very it's it's such a privilege to be totally with such a young Inspired, inspiring. Yeah, your passion is limitless. Who has a really, which is really, really cool. Who has such Thank a you. focus? Yeah. It's great, and it, and it, it's obviously you know. And kudos to your parents for for being yeah. such. Can a, we yeah. give a little clap for the yeah. parents? Yeah, I can. Yeah. They did a great job. <laughs> no, I mean I have great parents too, and it's like you know everything I share with them because it's all through them it's possible. So I'm so happy that you have that, and you have a good people around you. And we have a little mystery question. I'm in trouble. Pick it anywhere uh, you want. Can't pick from the front. That one's probably rigged. <laughs> uh, everybody picks that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, number yeah, six, number six, six, really? What a concept. Oh, so you can read it. Hey, how about reading it in, your, in one of the characters that you do? 
Okay, I'll do Steven. Okay. Okay, do Steven. Although my voice may crack like crazy. That's I fine. had two we sessions like that. today. That's we all like right. that. Uh, what's your favorite fast food meal? <laughs> hmm. Like, this is a, a two prong question for me because okay. I don't normally eat fast food because I, you know, I try to eat healthy. So I have like my fast food meals that I eat on a regular basis, and yes. then I have the fast food meals that I really, really love. Um, well, what are all of those? Explain. Like, if <laughs> I, I get a lot of like grilled chicken sandwiches or turkey burgers at fast food joints, so that's mm -hmm. my go to. Like, okay. that's if I have to stop at a fast food joint, that's what I get. But if I'm like really going to town, like, it's always the chicken strips at Carl's Jr. <laughs> like, the chicken strips at Carl's Jr. Like, <laughs> like, did you see him salivating when he said that? No, the breading is. Uh, you're gonna do. You're gonna do a commercial. You're gonna oh do an audition. They're gonna send you that, and you're gonna be like, you're gonna nail it and book it. Because that was. <laughs> dude, you should have seen. But your they face. have those sexy Kate Upton commercials, but they don't need those anymore. No. I got something better. They've got yeah. you. Yeah. Oh my God, that's hysterical. No, they're great. Like Carl's Jr. They're they're not like a super popular item, but they're they're slept on. Like, yeah. Everybody needs to try. I'm, I'm like doing an advertisement <laughs> the, the, at this point. The tasty chicken strips at Carl's Jr. <laughs> yeah, like I grew present. up on McNuggets and everything, and yeah. that's that's fine. But no, they they taste like restaurant mm. chicken strips. Yeah. <laughs> They're like we worse for you. We know where you're going on the way They're home. They're worse for you. <laughs> no, 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 I can't. I can't. I know. There's oh like five God. Carl's Juniors like on this street between yeah. here and my I house. I know, dude. No. Dude, I yeah. gotta tell you something, man. You, you are so you're freaking hilarious. cool, man. Oh, you, you really, man. really are. Yeah. Uh, likewise, if I had a kid, he'd be just like you. I'm I'm honored. <laughs> yes. Just don't name him Zach. No, his name would be like uh, it'll be forever misspelled. Uh, what was no our child's name? Juanita. 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 I name him Juanita. Even if it's your son, just name him Juanita. Juanito. Well, Juan I have an Juanito. amazing. Juanito. I have an amazing nephew, Zach. So there must be something about yeah. that name. So. Um, it just it, depends on how you spell. It. How does he spell it? Z a c h. Okay, that 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 explains it. Zachary. Yeah. yeah Zachary. I'm, you know. No, a, you're, with apologies yeah, to case, everyone that I'm yeah. about to insult, but I don't I don't stand by the other spellings. It's yeah. sort of like a. Like a war among Zacks that's sort of unspoken. Like when you meet another Zach, you, you know, <laughs> oh, your name's Zach too? How do you spell it? And oh. then, because there's a million ways. I knew right. a guy that spells Zachary Z A Q U E R I. Really? Oh so it's limitless possibilities wow. for better or for worse. Wow. <laughs> and you spell there's yours Z A K Y. No. <laughs> Zaki. Zaki. Yeah. Zaki. My full name actually does have a strange spelling. It's because I go by Zach, always have Z A C H, yeah. but. Most people, it's Zachary with either an A-R-Y or an E-R-Y, mm -hmm. but mine is just Z-A-C-H-R-Y. R-Y. Two syllables instead of three, because wow. yes. my yeah, parents yeah, yeah. decided I had to be a special snowflake. Yeah, like. and you are. and you. Yeah, they're so, crazy over there in St. Louis. So cool, man. There's I'll something in the water in St. Yeah, Louis. Yeah, there is. It makes it's you crazy the, for baseball. It's, and, the, uh, it's, the, it's the arch. Yeah, it, it you stare at it too long, people. it does funny things to yeah, your head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been forever indoctrinated as a St. Louis Cardinals fan. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is such a pleasure to have you here. Absolutely. You're always welcome. Thank you. So much abundance and blessing and happiness to you, and we're so happy that we know you and For have you here. For sure. And, um, oh, likewise, this was so much fun. On, babe. Yep, absolutely. Zach Callison, ladies and gentlemen, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Later. Hey, I'm Zach Callison, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. To all my artists out there, keep making art. It's super important. That's your PSA for the day, and my good deed. All right, that concludes our two-part episode with Zach Callison. Oh, love and him. All I have to say is that the next generation of voiceover oh, is so looking pretty promising. promising. Yes, they are in good hands. Yes. They're in good hands. Hey, you guys, thanks for watching. Keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And just remember, you, you always have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.